Hey, I'm James Mutugo. I'm Lexi Grabowski. I'm Briar Knowles. My name is Jessica Malka. I'm Christy Murdoch. It's Alaska Lee. I am Natasha Prasad. I'm Megan Hemingway. I'm Leanne Johnson. My name is Snezhana Baikova. I'm Kate Schroeder. My name is Natasha Herbert. My name is Rachel. My name is Deborah Lee Smith. I'm Rebecca Amzaleg. And I'm an actress and producer. I'm an actress based in New York City. Writer. Actress. I'm an actor. Actor and filmmaker. I'm an actress based in Los Angeles. And I'm an actor, singer, songwriter. I'm an actress. I'm a model actress based out of Calgary, Alberta. I'm an actor and a musician. I am an actress based in Toronto, and I want to thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in to the Chat with Dan Show. Right. Welcome back, everyone, to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. For today, we have on the show, I mean, what can I say? We have the badass, the legendary, the amazing Annalisa. Annalisa, how are you today? Good, how's it going? I'm doing fantastic. I mean, what better way to have an epic Thursday than to be chatting with someone as bad as you? You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think I'm as cool as you sound. <laughs> yeah, of course. I won. Let's face it. But anyway, uh, before we start, I do want to thank those who are watching. Thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow, leave me a comment, let me know. And without further ado, let's jump in now. For those who don't know who is the incredible, amazing, badass superstar, Annalisa, please tell us who you are. <laughs> Hi, my name is Annalisa Wall. Um, I am a theater actress, vocal performer, and now a film actress, and also jewelry maker and a bodybuilder. So there you go. So you basically are doing everything. Pretty much everything, yeah. I love that. <laughs> All of that. Now, let's go back in time and tell me where this passion for acting started. Like, what triggered it? Um, so I was actually about three years old. Um, and I was just kind of, I don't know, I guess I had an affinity for singing and, and I was obsessed with musical cats and I memorized the entire, um, Mustafali song, like the, oh, well, I never was there ever a cat so clever, which is like six and a half minutes long. Um, and did it <laughs> in its entirety for a little audition for a little tiny kids group called Sound Celebration. And I come from a background of people who are not actors mm -hmm. or performers or musicians in any kind, um, like nobody is. And, you know, my parents always said like, well, you know, she kept getting all these leads and like all like little Sound Celebration. So um, they started taking me to the theater when I was six. And then by seven, I worked my first professional production. So it's kind of been a 20 year long, thing um that started because I could sing which is just kind of that like raw talent and then I was thrown into theater because why not and I decided a split second when I was 17 that I was going to pursue theater as my major rather than opera um and then I just kind of like continued my training from there like acting wise mm -hmm. and here we are and here we are yes. I love that I love that but tell <laughs> me what were some of the challenges that you had when you were, you know, making your first steps into a pro career? Um, I will say it was like pretty isolating. I don't know. I don't know about other people's experiences, but this is something that I've, um, you know, I feel like a lot of us post COVID, like we were kind of coming to terms with a lot of like our trauma from the past and like yeah. we are as people. And, and I, and I did realize that like as a child being like a child prodigy and kind of paraded around um, up and down the East coast, getting flown first class, getting, you know, hotels and like $600 dinners comped and everything like that. Like while it was grandiose and wonderful and I should be super appreciative, I didn't have like friends. Like I wasn't allowed to have sleepovers or it was always like, no, you have rehearsal or like, no, you have a show tomorrow or no, we're flying to like Orlando. And that also kind of ostracized me a little bit from my friend group because like I wasn't normal I wasn't a normal kid yeah. so I was often like looked down upon I was made fun of a lot um and then in my adult years I kind of realized that I had a problem like making adult friends because I was still kind of stuck in that like naivety you know what I mean from that like oh like do you like me you know so like that's just kind of something that I've I've come to terms with now like that I would overcompensate when I was trying to make adult friends because I didn't have that, like that foundation where you, it was okay to make mistakes. You mm. know? Yeah. 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 I can understand that, that, that. That's like, while it was amazing and like got me to a really great level, like it also stunted me a little bit. Mm. Yeah. I can mm. understand that. Yeah. I mean, 
And it's interesting because, for example, in my case, when I started this platform, I have discovered that they, that this platform kind of pushed me. I mean, it's going to sound, yeah, it might sound bad, but hear me out. So what ended up happening is that it kind of pushed me out from some friends and family, you know, because they, they were started treating me because every time they were saying like, hey, let's hang out or let's do this, or let's do that. I was like, I can't, I need to do this or I need to edit this video or I need to interview this person or I need to plan this next interview, things like that. And it ended up pushing me away. But then you start to discover that that is just part of it, you know, that um, that's life. You know, if you want to yes. if you want to follow your passion and dreams, that's perfect. And whoever tags along, great. And mm -hmm. if someone that who was close to you doesn't want to, that's totally understandable. But you don't but you need to focus on you, which at some point I was this type of person who wanted to please everyone. And Hilarious. at the same time, you ended up discovering that it's super exhausting because you 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 focus you put your attention on others instead of yourself. So, you know exactly. Mm -hmm. Moving yeah. on here, yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. Yeah, people pleaser. Yeah, <laughs> people yeah, like, what do you like what do yeah, I want? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible because yeah, at some point you you start to question yourself like, what do you actually like? You know. Mm -hmm that mm -hmm. you you really you really start to have like these issues that do I like do I really like this or if I'm gonna I don't know cook dinner or order some food I'm like I'm, I'm, do I really like this or I'm just ordering because of you know because other people, the people yeah. yeah yeah so it tends to be like a little bit complicated which I'm getting better at it which is great but every now and then I would be like do we actually like this or or if I watch a film I'm like am I actually like this genre of film or it's just because I watched it back then with some friends because you know you know so I can understand mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. it's crazy now um uh, moving on here tell me like how you prepare a character of course that i understand that depends on the role but what is your initial approach for you to start this whole journey so i um my approach i don't know if you're familiar more with meisner technique um mm -hmm. but i am a i mean there's a lot of different like actors approaches for people who you know like did study the craft and and you know have their like little actors tool belt um, I particularly lean more towards Meisner actor. Um, I'm less of, oh, what do, what does Annalisa think this character wants? Um, I'm less of that and I'm more of trust the text. Um, the text is there for you. The, you know, the dramaturge did the work, the writer did the work, everything has been done for you. It is now up to your interpretation, which is why you were casted on how these words come out. And it also has a lot to do with your counterpart um, and how, and like what they give to you. Um, but I mean, I'm a big fan of kind of like the moment before. Now I'm not going to be somebody on set where it's like, don't talk to me. Like I'm completely in character, right? Like I don't, I personally don't feel like those people are super approachable. And then I'm also not the adverse. I'm also not the one that's just kind of like loosey goosey laughing all the time. And, and I'm here for a blooper reel. Like I'm, I'm not. Um, yeah. So like in between takes, I kind of live like in the middle, you know, like where the character, like I'm, I've got one foot in the character and one foot in the, what's that, you know, like, well, okay, yeah. we're doing this. Like, all right, let's keep going. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of dramaturgy work is really, really, really important. Um, you know, especially like if you're doing a character that is already like established in some sort of like world, you know, whether that is like a, like a period piece or whatnot, I think kind of submerging yourself in as much like text mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like media as possible um, is going to be conducive for that. And then all of that can just kind of like come alive when you're on set. Yeah, yeah. And has it ever happened to you that during the process of creating a character, there was something about it that you could, that it got you stuck, let's say, that it got you, yeah, basically for not keep creating it at some point? Hmm. I'm trying to think, because I've done, I mean, I would say sometimes the, like, the only thing that I can think about is, is like, if I was doing like a particular accent, mm. uh, and if I just really didn't have that down yet and I didn't feel super comfortable, then like a certain phrase or whatnot would trip me up and it would actually yep. kind of pull me into it where I'm like, oh, I'm here now. It's me. It's not this person. Um, but typically, I mean, like I've been I've been casted really well. I've been casted to my trope. Um, like I've been casted to my stereotype a lot. So I'm not really left like wanting. Mm. Occasionally, like I'll play a role that's like a little bit older than me but um 
but I mean like the casting director and they they obviously felt like I was a good fit so <laughs> yeah, yeah of course yeah. of course and when you're doing like the whole accents does that ever stuck to you uh, uh like a couple of days or you manage to once you finish boom you return to the normal you you let's say it does it 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 kind of does um it's kind of like you know if you speak a little bit of Spanish and you go to a Spanish country and then your brain starts switching over. And now, you know, when you get back to the States, like you're, you're like, ah, okay, I'm thinking in Spanish a little bit. Um, mm. It's kind of like that. Um, and then also there are like really similar accents, like to me, um, it's just like the place in the mouth where the accents are held, not necessarily like proximity region wise. Yep. So like if I've been doing a Scottish accent for a while and you want me to flip to some sort of like, ambiguous Russian accent, it's going to be really hard because they're held in the same place of the mouth for me. Mm. So that is kind of like, you know, I would take a step back, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's cool. I mean, I love like whenever, like the other day I was, um, I was seeing this interview that um, anyway, like the point of this interview is that they, they were talking about Christian Bale. Mm -hmm. And then when they said that he's actually from the, you know, from the UK, they were saying like, what? Like, yeah, he's actually from the UK. Like nobody kind of real like nobody kind of realized that because, you know, he played Batman and everything and, and he mm -hmm. made like a really cool job to hide his real accent, you know, his real accent yeah. to play an American one. I find that pretty like pretty cool, pretty uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Unbelievable. Cause like I can I can also spot out when I'm watching, you know, films and 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 TV shows. Typically if the characters are from another country and they're doing something where they get very heated or very angry, their accent will slip up. Mm. And Nicole Kidman is a, is a big, <laughs> oh, really? okay. a big one for that. Like if she gets angry, like occasionally it's like, <laughs> and you'll hear it. Um, but not just her, like, like pay attention sometimes. Cause I'll go like, are they from the UK? And then I'll like quickly like IMDB and I'll go, yup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I saw another interview from Tom Holland. And mm -hmm. he was saying that after playing Spider-Man, the American accent stuck with him. And mm -hmm. while he was doing a commercial yeah. uh, in England, they were telling him, like, dude, speak normally. You know, don't yeah. like, don't like, like, stop it. <laughs> so he was like, okay, okay, give me, give me a second. So I find that, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I like that. Yeah. And tell me, like, moving forward here. And yeah, like, moving forward here. Recently, you were in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is, which is like the most amazing. I mean, at least to me, it's like the perfect Marvel film for a for a very long time. But anyway, tell me how it was like the whole experience to be there. Um, so I spent about four months on set. Um, I first got I don't even a mystery role. I don't even know what it was because it mm. was cut during Omicron. Um, now I know it was, but all I know is the pay rate and what was entailed. Um. <laughs> um but so that was like back it was like cut back around like november ish um and then uh i was on set during the um like because i was already in the database they were just doing like a little background poll for the um you could talk spoilers the christmas special i was trying to think for the christmas special they did a little oh, background yeah, yeah. Special. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i was like okay sure why not and i went on set and I got lucky. I got lucky day one, which is actually kind of how I landed Machindig in the movie. So like I had something and then it was gone and I went, why not? And then I got lucky. I got placed um, right next to, uh, I guess maybe it was the outfit I was wearing. You never know. I got placed right next to, um, her name is Clementine and she is the stand-in for Mantis. She's a stand-in for Pom. And that day, James was like, look, Clementine, I don't need you to work. I need somebody dressed like a Christmas tree. Like, I need somebody who looks like freaking Christmas. And so I'm just kind of standing there. And she turns around. She goes, hey, guess I'm here now. And then, boom, all of a sudden, James Gunn goes, Clementine and Clementine's friend. And then I suddenly became Clementine's friend. And through that, um, sheer luck, uh, I ended up meeting Jared who is the stand-in for Drax. He is also, he also plays Krugar in, um, in the movie. He is the one that people are, I've noticed that people are kind of thinking he might be in the Doctor Strange universe. He's like the little wiggly dude that went mm. like that, you know? Um, and then at the very end, like he's hugging Gamora. Um, but no, like I met him, 
Um, I also met uh, like Dave Batista's pretty much his whole lineup of of friends um, because the the gay club scene that we did is when he was like, look, I want the people that have carried me from the beginning. I want to give them a cameo because they deserve it because he's a nice guy. Um, yeah. So like that happened and then boom, now I'm on set for four months for Guardians. Um, I had somebody ask me, I did a TikTok live the other day about it. And I had somebody ask me like, what was like the worst part of it? And I was like, there wasn't like a worst part, you know, are the hours long? Yeah. But like, you know, that they're going to be, you know, that they're going to be long hours. Yeah. So you get Dr. Scholl's and you start bringing snacks because the food sometimes isn't amazing. And like it was just um and I mean like a, a couple of days like you're there all day long and you're not really used because you know maybe we're doing like a fill-in day I know that like Dave had an injury during the fight scene with um uh Adam Warlock mm -hmm. so, like we filled it in at the end um you know so like days like that that are just long but you prepare for it you know um it was actually really emotional for me personally because it was my first like big film that I had done since I've decided that I was going to switch my career. And for somebody who spent 20 years kind of making it to the top and in something that is so, so, so similar to then be like starting at the bottom, um, that didn't matter yeah. to me because the caliber of people were so different in this industry. Like the, the friends that I've made on set friends that I've made that were in the cast and the friends that I made that were in the crew are like lifelong friends now. Like they are good people, like yeah. solid people. They aren't clicky. They aren't shitty. They aren't catty, you know, like uh, quite honestly, if you have that kind of attitude, you're out while in theater, it was kind of mm. emboldened yeah. to be a dick, you know? So like, the last day it was like really really emotional and we spent probably two weeks filming the end which was can i do spoilers yeah go for it okay the end which was um the you know the dog days that that dance we spent about two weeks doing that and wow. it felt like a release like karen was mentioning in, in one of her interviews like she was like it's it's like the perfect way to like say goodbye and it yeah. did like how we were all dancing, like we were dancing for like eight consecutive hours, like ev <laughs> like every day and yeah. everybody smelled so bad. Like yeah, everybody I bet. Smelled so, so, so bad. Um, and the kids were there too. And the kids were throwing rocks and like, we were like, stop throwing rocks. And <laughs> but it was just like, I don't know, like there's something very cathartic about being a human in a room full of people just dancing like a bunch of weirdos to a, a really loud song, like and screaming. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there's something very like yeah. unifying and like community based, especially because these like A-list actors were right there with us, talking to us, hanging out with us. Like they weren't, we weren't different, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. 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 And it's incredible. Like how, like, <clears throat> like how emotional that film is, you know, yeah. when I saw it, when I saw it on theater, it's inevitable that you're going to start cry over, you know, and, and, yeah. and, and, What I love about it is that, for example, on Guardians, on Guardians, like volume one, mm -hmm. you were crying about a tree. About you a tree. Know? Yeah. Okay. And then the second one, you were kind of a little bit crying about this blue guy who just died, you know, who was the father of, you know, your quill. And then um, on, on this one, like the story of the raccoon rocket, you start crying. And, and, and I, I remember like that that immediately I was I was also emotional I was just looking over. Everybody was the, was kind of the same. It was like a very emotional moment. And then by the last scene when everyone's dancing is yeah it, it 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 actually feels like the perfect send off you know like a perfect farewell to say you know what this is it you know and i and, and i even saw this interview saying uh you know this article saying that this that this should be like the perfect farewell from the MCU for a while because yeah. it, it it ended up being a, I, i mean besides being super successful it just has something to it that is like the perfect, you know, that you can actually say, you know what, we're done for a while. We'll see you in, I don't know, four, what, four or five years. That's yeah. it, you know, because it is actually super well made. And yeah, yeah. It is. And, and it was a little bit of a godsend, you know, to the MCU, as I'm sure you have a personal opinion about, as do I. And yeah. um, I will tell you that a lot of the crew did jump ship 
from Marvel to DC along with James. So yeah. um, you follow the visionary, you follow, he's got a great crew. He, he surrounds himself with good people. There's a reason why his wife is always in movies and his best friend, Steven is always in movies. And it's because he goes, I know how you work. You work really well and you do what I want. Like you can, you can embody the vision that I have. So he carries people with him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Like the first AD on that is now um, vice president of production for DC studios. There you so, go. yeah, I was like, he was like, you work really well with me. Let's go. You know, yeah. and, and that I think is super ab admirable, especially for anybody in a position of power. It, it's whenever you get up to the top, you look down and you see the people that were the ladder to, to get you there and you bring them up, you bring them up with you. Mm. that's that's what he does that's what he does and did and um yeah so like in a way it, it was kind of his like farewell as it was a lot of other people's farewells for the for the mcu yeah yeah it's uh, i mean as i was saying before i mean i i i loved it by the, from from the beginning to the end the soundtrack i mean it, like those like yeah oh. like this trilogy the soundtrack it's amazing i mean it's it's And also, like if you like if you listen to like the whole vibe to the song or even the lyrics, you can mm -hmm. totally know what up like what the scene is gonna be about. You know what I mean? That he yeah. managed to kind of match perfectly the soundtrack on film, which I love that because for some films, they will just throw songs at it. It is mm -hmm. and it's good, but sometimes it just doesn't match at all. You know, and you doesn't kind match. of feel it. You know, you kind of feel like mm, there's something about this that doesn't click it. But here, it matches like super smooth, and I like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and I can understand that. That that uh, I mean, at the end, you want to work with the best. You know, and if and if and if at the same time, if, if that person is moving forward for, on this case, you know that uh, that he's moving to this to uh, to DC. Of course, that uh, that if you got the the opportunity to tag along, you will go with them because at the same time you want to keep working with the best, and at the same time you know you know the work, and it's more easy for you to understand what can you expect. You know what I mean? So, yeah. mm -hmm. I love that. Now yeah. moving forward here a little bit, tell me, like, is there any type of character that you would refuse to play, maybe because the type of message it's not something that you believe in? Hmm. Um. The only thing that I would stay away from is mega churches and anything super evangelical. I do not wish okay. to be affiliated with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I can but, that. but honestly, even if it was something, even if we're doing some sort of, you know, Holocaust, World War II, mm. and I was depicted on the side of, you know, the axis, I still would take it because it is a story that needs to be told. You know, mm -hmm. same thing with like, um, you know, period pieces that involve slavery and whatnot. Like, I would accept it because it's a story that needs to be told. Yeah. yeah. I personally don't agree with whoever I'm portraying. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, even if I'm a serial killer, I'm obviously not on the side of that person. <laughs> I tend yeah. to I tend to get I tend to get cast as the villains a lot of the time or like bitches. I just, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, throw it at me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's funny because for some of the actors that I've interviewed, they mm. love playing villains. Oh, it's great. They it's just great. love it, you know, because you can basically do whatever you kind of want because you're the villain. Mm. So it's like, so everybody's expected for you to go like, go crazy, you know, instead of being like the hero or things like that. I feel like people can get caught in the trap and, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'll get all hypercritical about that. I feel like you can get caught in the trap as a villain of I'm angry and I'm always angry and I have no dimension whatsoever. Mm. And a lot of the times people fail, you know, well, not people fail, but they, it, it, you can get caught yeah. in, in the high of that and like lose the dimension of the character or lose the idea of like, this was a person who made these choices to get here. So they are, You know, like, for example, like Chuck Woody's performance as high evolutionary, like he's he's a Shakespearean actor, like he is an actor's actor. And I believe that he actually thought that what he was doing was right. You know, like you have mm -hmm. like with those people who are portraying villains, like you have to you have to be like, my character believes that what they're doing is right. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. 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 And and talking a little bit about that, about the whole high uh evolutionary i mean he was a perfect villain i loved it i mean you hate it but there is like like there is there is something about this villain that uh that you just yeah that you just love it you know instead of other villains in other films or or anyway that that 
there was something about it, you know, besides that it was super well made, but you just hate it, you know, and whenever, you love and, to uh, hate him. yeah, you love to hate him. You're like, yeah, please, like, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and that is what I like about a film. If there is a villain that you can actually really, that there's something about, that there is well made, you know, because sometimes we'll get this, yeah, this cardboard villains out of nowhere and you're like, okay, so, and the villain will say, yeah, I'm bad. Why I'm bad. I just, I'm just bad and I'm just going to do it's shit bad. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and things like that. And that's, yeah, I, I mean, personally, I don't like that. Or or whenever they will try to play the villain as a good person, you know, that they will work very hard to so, to uh, to make the villain be like a good one. You know, I'm like, OK, but if you're going to make a villain, just make a, you know, make a shitty person, which we have in this world, Got and, a lot of shitty people. you know, and just throw it in and we'll see what happens. And I love whenever they create a very good villain. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell me, like, do you feel as actor that there is a purpose to it, that there is like a meaning to it? Oh, absolutely. We yeah. are storytellers. There, there is a calling yeah. to it. There is a deep seated calling. And there have been many, many, many a times I have sobbed because I haven't been on a stage since the end of 2019. Totally. And being on a stage for 20 years up to that, it's it's another it's another world that you step mm. into. It's it's all the work that you've done in the room, all the work that the costumers have done, all the work that the lighting technicians have done, that the DTs have done, everything. It just comes together in that one moment and you just look out and it's just you and the black. That's all it is. And it is a, it is in, you are trying to live through this character and live through the story to share it with others. Mm. And you are not above the others because if you're above the others and you will not connect with them because ultimately the goal is to connect with the audience and to make the audience move in a certain way you know you're not you're not just self-indulgent you know what i mean like a lot of the times people think that these actors are like there is there is a purpose to it and and i quite literally cannot do anything else like i mm. i can't I, I've had to take a couple of different jobs over the course of the years to pay bills because as we know, inflation's a bitch and there's a strike going on right now. So that's a little bit on the back burner for everybody and, and we make ends meet, but there is literally nothing else that I could do. Mm. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, let's be honest without entertainment, you know, film series during COVID, you know, basically that kept us sane, you know, and that, that kept, kept us sane. entertained yeah. for like, for like, yeah for for the whole pandemic stuff so and i think that was kind of the the breaking point for us to realize that how we should really appreciate that you know because sometimes we take it from granted and be like oh whatever but actually i mean once you like once you put it in um in perspective you realize that actually entertainment kept people sane and saved millions yeah. of people lives during this whole lockdown because you know like being inside not not like not being able to go outside with friends or even to go walk a little bit you know things like that so it's really so i do think that this was kind of the that the message to it that we need entertainment for us either to distract our minds or to learn something you never know so yeah where you can escape into a world and escape into you lose your problems because you're involved in somebody else's. Totally. You know, yeah. Totally, totally. And tell me, is there a film that you have watched recently that has changed your mind about something or has inspired you or on um, yeah, you know, on something? Hmm. A film that I've watched recently. It's so interesting because recently I've kind of pulled away from consuming a lot of entertainment. Mm. And I'll watch like, oh, my episode's on. Let's watch that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, but I'm I'm kind of leaning more towards right now um writing. Um, not necessarily films have inspired me, but the people that I have met because mm. of Guardians, um, that I have been talking to, um, that have kind of inspired me to, as Lloyd Kaufman likes to say, make your own damn movie. And, you know, I, I, I do think that like now is the kind of the time to do that. Um, obviously no crossing any picket lines, nothing, nothing of that, that caliber. We're not, we're not talking about going behind writer's backs and submitting something to, to Netflix, but we're talking about a cultivation of, of those ideas, because I feel like a lot of the times you can get caught in the rat race 
And, you know, you can get so caught up in, in just being on a set and being on a set and being on a set and, and the, the wonderment of it all that, that you take a step back and you go like, whoa, like, where's my journey going? Like, what, like, what do I want to do with my own journey? Mm. And so kind of like COVID did a little bit, like, this is, this is a, a time for artists to kind of sit, reflect, get everything together, you know, like the resumes, the headshots could kind of get everything pieced. And maybe, maybe get a storyboard going, maybe, maybe just get all of these little ideas that you have in the shower where you go, that would be hilarious. Or, you know, where you wake up in the middle of the night, and you go like, oh, that would be a good idea for a, for a short film or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, Jot them down, you know, like start cultivating your own, your own expression. And, and a lot of these people that I've, that I've worked with have actually like started to inspire me to do so. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end, why not doing it, you know? I do think also that that this past, I mean, COVID and also this past few years has kind of um, taught us that that why not try do some like why not trying doing something you want, you know? I mean, we mm -hmm. spend our lives so, like sometimes focusing on you know on um, finding a stable job or things like that, which is understandable. I mean, we need money to survive, you know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like once you realize you like one day you're gonna be what sixty, seventy, and then you start to regret, like, oh, why I didn't I do this or why I didn't I chose this path or why didn't I went this way, you know? So I do, yeah. I do, I do uh, encourage people to just try it, you know. If you want to go for acting, go for it. If you want to go for writing, go for it. And it's really cool that during like during the COVID, like with some of the actors that I've interviewed they started create their own stuff because there was not because there was none of it they were like okay, you know what i'm just gonna make my own my own film so i'll gather a couple yep. of friends we'll see what happens we'll start writing a script we get the equipment here and there boom there's a film or even plays on zoom you know things like that which it was like very creative at the same time so yeah 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 i i actually got a bunch of like recording equipment and i started to sing again in my closet yeah. um during COVID. just just you know taught myself like minor like editing like audio editing because I just you know that this was still at a time of where I was like I'm gonna go back to theater and then as it mm. started to you know as the veil was lifted I went oh I don't think I want to <laughs> yeah. so I you know like it, had I known I was going to go into film during during COVID I definitely would have done that because I, I do know a lot of people that did that or or they were like you know what I'm gonna do a stunt reel and mm. we're gonna we're gonna stage a fight in the woods and boom I can yeah. do stunts obviously with proper training and certification yeah. and whatnot. I mean, <laughs> you're safety not just first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing axes at each other. Yeah, yeah, safety yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, like, fun enough, I do have two scripts that I'm, two scripts that I'm working on. I mean, I'm not a writer or anything, but because I've interviewed so many, you know, actors and writers, the other day I was like, what if I just start writing something, you know? And I and I have already two scripts ready to go, but I'm like, okay, you know what? Once I move to Canada, because I'm planning to move there, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. since since I have like a since with the connection of people that I have make, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna throw the scripts and we'll see what happens. You know, why not? I've yeah. got a person who's looking for scripts right now. If if you want to send them my way as well, that would be mm -hmm. interesting too. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean they're not really. A a anyway, I'll. I'll tell you. I'll tell you <laughs> about that later. You know, I'll, let's not like dive into it because it's gonna take hours. But anyway, um, now let's say that you get a time machine for your birthday, right? Now here's the thing: what would you like? What would you like to have told to that little to that little version of yourself? You know, let let let's say that you can go back in time and meet the 13 year old version of you. So, what would you like to have told to yourself at that moment? Uh, I would have started film sooner, and I wouldn't have gone to college. Yeah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna drop it now. <laughs> yeah, drop the mic. Yeah, uh, yeah. no, I have. Uh, don't waste your time with those dreams. They're they're run by people who. I I always like to say the biggest difference was in theater, there was an elitism, mm. of I have something that you want, and in film it's I have something that you want, and you have something that I want. That's mm. what it is. It's mutual because that's what it is. Is it's you have a job for me and I've got an actor for you, you know, but but in in theater it's basically it's like grovel. Grovel. Get beneath me. And there's a really really toxic mindset that a lot of um my former colleagues are kind of coming out of right now and they're very angry about it. <laughs> um and I'm I'm watching it happen and you know there's a part of me that's like good, join me. And then there's also another part that's like why did we, why did we tell these kids, this is the work, mm. you know, miss out on funerals and birthdays and weddings, because this is the work you need mm. to do a non-union job in Colorado. What? 
No, you have zero hobbies other than showing up to Pearl Studio at five in the morning and then being sent home at 10 because you're a brunette. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's as much as I loved my acting experience at my college um, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. The teachers that I had at my conservatory that I went to were the right teachers for me. I went mm. on the right acting journey, started with Uda, went to Meisner, finished with Stanislavski, Loba, Shakespeare, all this all fun stuff. I loved that those building blocks for me worked really, really well for me. Yeah. Um, my teachers were incredible, but all of the other fluff uh, that was kind of involved in it and also the debt was not worth it. Mm. It wasn't worth it. I right out of high school i should have i should have pursued my acting training but without getting a degree yeah because the degree is kind of useless if you don't want to teach and all of the all of the connections that i made in that industry you know mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it kind of helped but i mostly rode the coattails of the connections i made from 0 to 18 more so that the connections that I made after that while I was still living in New York and Philly. Like, mm-hmm. and the the connections that I made these last two years are gonna stay a lifetime. It's a completely different, completely different monster. And mm-hmm. I would have gotten the training because training is absolutely crucial. You shouldn't just be like, I'm gonna be an actor one day because, yeah. oh, um, and I'll get into that later, but <laughs> yeah. I, I have to say for some people that are like, I'm an actor. I submitted one time and there we go. I, I get a little, um, I get a little bootstrappy about that, mm-hmm. which is my own death. But, yeah, I, get uh, <laughs> I get it. I do get it. I do get it. Yeah. But, but no, I mean like that's, that's what I a hundred percent would do is I would just get involved in that world a lot sooner. And I, you know, I, I would be where I am now, like six years ago you know totally totally but i mean at the end of the day you have achieved really epic stuff i mean you know so yeah and i i have a problem with with allowing myself to be okay with that i have a problem with diminishing myself i have a problem with going yeah but where are you now it's not good enough what are you doing you know what you're doing now is not equivalent to the trajectory you were on before but it i I should be i should be proud of myself and i should be I should admire the journey that I've taken because what a roller coaster, you know, it's unique and it's unique to me. And I, and I, I need to get better about that. I know that. Yeah. That's why in the beginning I said that you were a total badass. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, she's a badass. You know, let's face it. He gets it. <laughs> totally. You know, I mean, you, I mean, you were in the, you were, you were recently in one of the most successful films of all times. I mean, yeah. And I, and my first thing was like, well, I had more screen time, but it was cut. And then I was like, stop that. You were in it. Yeah. You were in it. I mean, the experience is there. In it. Like who cares? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're not Karen. Okay. You're not, it's okay. Annalisa. Like I, I have to be much better with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, but, but I mean, you, the experience you had it, you know, the moments you have them. So you made it happen, you know, regardless if they cut it, if they cut it or not, you were there. You know? Yeah, and that's what it is, is is I've fortified a tremendous relationship with Lloyd Kaufman, who I was in the scene with, um, the scene that was, you know, cut. And they, they cut a lot from there, um, which makes sense. You know what I mean? Like a lot of things just don't make the final movie for various reasons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but that day, he he and I, I forgot what I said, but he said something quippy and, and a little crass and I came right back at him and then we started a beautiful beautiful friendship right then and there on nowhere and he pulled out his phone and he was like give me your number real quick and I was like oh okay like and everyone was like (laughs) um but yeah and then I you know and now I kind of work for him and and I've worked some premieres with him and he's become a really 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 good friend of mine and he's introduced me to some incredible people and he kind of started the whole trauma thing. He started James Gunn. He's kind of, he's the reason why that that little group of, you know, in the industry, like, is what they are. And, mm. and I like trauma people. I like, I like, I like Stevie. I like James. I like Lloyd. I like Sean. I, they're, they're good people. They're good people. Yeah. 
Yeah, which is amazing. And and yeah, I mean, that's why I say you're a total badass. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, as I said, I mean, I love what you do and, and it's incredible. It's epic. It's badass. And tell me, like, let's say that one day, you know, HBO, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, you name it. Let's they call you. Uh, huh? Let's manifest it. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they call you and they tell you they have this idea which goes, they're going to make a film based on all of the characters you have played at the moment, all of them, either on theater or, you know, like all of them, they're all going to gather to celebrate your birthday. But here's the thing. The film needs a name. So how should we call it? <laughs> uh, oh, man. I was once called the gorgeous one with the heart of darkness. And I kind of want to call it heart of darkness if that's lame. <laughs> hmm. Okay, it has the vibe of HBO, just saying, you know, Dark, darkness, right? It has that vibe, yeah. Honestly, all my roles are, they're, they're always played like I'm full of myself, like mm. I'm a little, like I'm a loose woman. The more escort vibe is what I end up getting rather than like prostitute. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's my cheekbones. I don't understand. Mm. Uh, but I never get any ingenue roles. I never get any fun little like she gets the love interest. I always get the one that like steals the man and then is the villain <laughs> okay. at the end doing yeah. so. <laughs> so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it would it would definitely be something along those lines. <laughs> I'll take it. What about describing your whole career, but this time on a drink? Oof. How should we call it? Let's say that I want to order that drink. How should I call it? Well, I'm going to be partial because I love whiskey. And I love a good Manhattan and I love a good. So I make a mean banana boulevardier. Mm. I do. Mm. And it's going to have to be a banana boulevardier, but I don't know what it's called. And it doesn't taste like banana. It doesn't. Mm. It just brings mm. it brings a little bit of creaminess to the boulevardier-ness. So it's going to have to be something along those lines. What if we mix everything together? Okay. I, I mean, pieces of it, you know, not like not the whole thing. And then perhaps we could call it um, um, good luck, you know, like something like that. You know what I mean? Like, good luck. yeah, yeah, like good luck. Have like, be sure, you know? Yeah, it definitely would be something like that. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll try it. Why not? You know? Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah, like I don't know. It definitely, it definitely would be like smoky, maybe like a cherry flavor. Some Something has to do with vanilla in it. Mm. Along those lines, yeah. Okay, I'll take it. And what motivates you? You know, we all have those days, right? That we just want to quit. It's inevitable. It happens, you know, that some that, that one day you wake up and you're like, I want to quit. Screw it. So how you manage to get back on your feet and keep moving forward, basically? Hmm. Um, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a cop out here. It's a, uh... It's a song from um, Sunny in the Park with George by Stephen Sondheim. It's called Children and Art. And essentially, the basically the premise of the song is like what we leave behind at the end of the day is mm. inevitably children and art. Um, because that's what it is. You know, if you if you ask any old person on their deathbed, they always, they never go, Oh, I wish I spent more hours doing this. I spent uh, like, like more hours, like working or, or I spent, I wish I spent, you know, more times in meetings. They go, I didn't spend any time with my kids. I didn't go. Vacation. Oh, yeah. I didn't do the one passion that I always thought I wanted to. Yeah. And that's what it is. At the end of the day, you are going to be remembered. Your, your legacy is going to live on through children and art and biologically children but it's up to you about the art you know and mm. and and no matter what happens financially no matter what happens economically you know that that I have no control over you just have to keep putting that art out there you just have to keep and you're you're allowed to have your down days and and take your mental health because the moment that the art becomes work then it, it it's it's lost yeah and you know sprinkle that with a little bit of what I said earlier, which is I literally can't do anything else. Like, I don't know how to describe that calling, but I, I literally can't do anything else. The way I feel complete and whole and fulfilled when I'm on set, when I'm on stage is unlike anything I found anywhere else. Mm. Yeah. 
Wow. And I feel like people feel that, you know, people have that, that one thing that they tried that one time where they go, wow, I've never felt so complete in my life until I was doing that. And that's it. Whatever it is, if it's sailing, get on a boat. If it's cooking, get in the kitchen. You know what I mean? You don't mm-hmm. have to be prestigious. And I feel like a lot of the times people quit because they're not prestigious or what they think someone else's idea or identification of prestige might be. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah, 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 absolutely. I can. Yeah. 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 They get discouraged because they don't have like, you know, I do think that sometimes whenever they will, I mean, they will look up like very successful people who have, you know, overcome that. And mm-hmm. once you're starting out, it is overwhelming because you're like, okay, like how can I reach there? But at the end of the day, you start to discover later on that it's not about getting there. It's about getting into getting what getting it into what makes you happy. You know, as, as you mentioned, it's, it's a journey. yeah, because yeah. like I've started, you know, cause I was, I was very negative for a while as, as it can be when you watch your industry and your livelihood crash around you. And then it just yeah. kind of, you end up being Murphy's law and things keep happening. <laughs> and I have kind of, and I'm still doing this, but adopting the mindset of like, I I'm allowed to do this. Yeah. Like, like I recently picked up an additional job at a brewery down the street because, you know, I'm pulling back on my business that I have. And even though my business worked really, really well for me a couple of years ago, and I was living large, it's the universe telling me it's time to go. It's time to move back from that business. And it's time to focus more on, on this film career. And I'm, I'm starting to adopt the mindset of, of like, I get to live in this scrappy life right now. Like mm. I get to be like, all right, how am I going to bulk order for dinner? And like, you know, what are the recipes that I'm going to do for the whole week so that I'm not spending all this money on DoorDash or like, I get to be in a situation where I'm making friends at a brewery and I'm talking to people now when I work my, you know, three days a week or whatever, like I get to do this. I get to be in a part where I am in a sea of 250 people, you know, where nobody knows who I am and nobody knows what I did and nobody cares. And that is awesome to like, just be in that moment because as I climb, which I inevitably will, I will never get to get back to that rung. Mm. So I should, I'm I'm starting to embrace each rung rather than look up at the top and be like, I'm not close enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Let me tell, let me tell you like a, like a, uh, a quick story. When I started this platform back almost two years ago, um, Mm -hmm. I got this mentality that oh I need to make it you know I need to make it happen Joe Rogan here I go you know like things like that yeah, you know I need to make it yeah 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 I need to make it big right so mm-hmm. I was like okay so at that moment I got I got yeah I got fired from a job that I worked in for three years so I got this plenty of time plus so at that moment I was like, okay I got mo- I got a lot of time right now I'm gonna work on that and I'm gonna give myself a six months spam that I'm gonna make it you know make yeah. it rain things like that right okay so what happened was that. I got into this, yeah, into this rent, into this craziness, and I was booking 12, 13 interviews per day, wow. nonstop, Monday, th- Monday, Tuesday, like nonstopping, even on Sundays too. Yeah. And what ended up happening is that after those six months, I didn't become a millionaire, of course, uh, but I just felt tired. I was like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't. I feel yeah. super burnt out. I don't know. Like, I can't. I I just can't do it. And also because I was having 12 interviews daily, that wasn't also giving me the time to edit those videos and and, and, and like put it on it. And also sometimes actors will will announce like uh, like a project or they will talk about an upcoming film. And because I had a, like a lack of, 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 of previous videos, I was working on them. And sometimes whenever they are promoting something, I will be uploading it like a month later, you know, because of the of the spam that I have to uh, like uh, uh, upload. I mean, it was crazy. So yeah. at the end of it, I was like thinking, of, like thinking, uh, thinking about quitting. But I was like, what if I just take my time? You know, instead of having 12 daily, why don't you have one per week? So you will yeah. have multiple time on on edit stuff focus on more stuff like focus on on your personal life because at the same time i was not having time to be like to be more with my dogs you know or to be you know like little things but uh but they actually meant a lot and at the end i was like i I was like applying that mindset which i'm working now which is having two three perhaps a week and the Mm -hmm. rest of the and the rest of the week i have time to edit videos be with my dogs you know like 
relax myself like a little bit. Perhaps I will take a day off in which I don't want I don't want to know anything about this because you need those days and having this mentality of of no, you're going to rest until you die and non stopping. It's it ended up killing you. So yeah, no, it absolutely does, which is actually why I took a big step in the business, you know, before the economy kind of forced me to because I was working 80 hour work weeks and yeah. I wasn't investing any time in relationships or friendships or really giving a shit about like who I was. And, yeah. and, you know, when I took a step back from that, I, it, you learn to appreciate things differently, oh, you know, like totally. sometimes your bank account is really scary low, you know, and, and you go, I'm going to go sit on the hammock and read the money will come. Yeah. The money. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, focusing on the money doesn't help you doesn't help you a lot. I mean, it's better if you keep a mindset that right now I, I have money, great. Maybe tomorrow I, I will not have, but I will just focus on myself instead of focusing on something. Because if you focus on the money, at least to me, what ended up what 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 happens when when I start to think like that, suddenly I don't have any. You know, like like suddenly you have spent everything, you're like, Are you kidding me? And whenever you don't think about it and you really think about what's important, which is on yourself then you realize that, you know, like all those type of things, they will come, you know, you just focus on you. So yep. amazing. And my last question here is yes. if we could make this. Yeah. yeah. So this episode, we just did, if we could make it into a film, how should we call it? How should we call it? See, oh, man, maybe mm, clarity, clarity like that. Clarity. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, I've, I've realized that I'm, I mean, cause I mean, the topics that we discussed was like, you know, like mm. what we just did, like, it's more about your own journey and your own, yeah. you know, like it, it has nothing to do with what other people think. And, mm. and I think like that is the most to remove that veil is what I, what I've been saying a lot. Like when COVID removed the veil for me, you know, like yeah. it, it's clarity, it's clarity. Okay. Because that's going to be the title of this video. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be Clarity by Actress Annalisa. <laughs> oh god. It sounds like a self-help book. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun, you know? Yeah. Let's leave it like that. Let's see what happens. I like that. Good. Thank you. Right. Appreciate I mean at the end, what can I say, Annalisa? As I was saying in the beginning, I mean it's I love what you do. It's incredible. And the fact that you are doing it, but now that you I mean yeah, like the fact that you're doing it and the uh, and and that you're making it happen. I mean, I think that's proof enough for everyone to be like, you know what? If she can do it, I can do it too. But also, yeah. it's your passion. And I under, I mean, and, and I would assume that along the way there there has been moments in which you were like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm done. But you're still doing. You know, you you you, you still make it happen, and you have achieved incredible things as we were uh, speaking before. So yeah, keep doing what you do. Because I'm super sure that our next conversation is gonna be about the multiple thousands projects you've been in. Because I do think that great things happen to those who are honest in what they do and what you do. It's incredible. So I appreciate that. Let's, let's keep manifesting it. Let's keep manifesting it. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm just starting by the way. Uh, but yeah, so I want to thank you for that. I also want to thank those for watching. Thank you so much. Now on the description below, you're going to find Annalisa social media. Let's follow her. Let's make her viral hashtag team. Annalisa because she's incredible. And also leave me a comment. Let me know. Let me know what you think about this conversation. If you want to add something or, or ask something, let me know in the comments. And again, Annalisa, thank you so much. Keep, 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 keep being this incredible of a badass of a sunshine person you are and I'll be definitely seeing you in the next one. All right. Thanks so much. There you go.